Okay, so don't mind my eyebrows. If you think that they're terrible, I agree with you. I got the notification like only a little bit ago that said my results were finally ready for 23andMe and I just was so excited to see it. But I was waiting to make the video for it so that I could get like my first reaction and whatever through video. And um, so I just had to put makeup on real quick because I'm going through like a bad acne phase. It's lasted like, you know, like five months now, but that's fine. These are my rushed eyebrows for my rushed, excited 23andMe results viewing video. Okay, before I see my results, I will just say what I believe right now, what I believe my heritage right now is, is I know that I'm mixed. I know that I'm half white, half Asian, and more specifically half like Irish, Swedish, and half Indonesian slash Chinese, but that's kind of a weird one. There's a good possibility that I'll mostly be Chinese on that side, but I don't know because my mom came from Indonesia and she was born and raised in Indonesia, but it's kind of like known that like a few generations back, like our grandparents or something like that came from China. I don't really know super duper well. So that'll be an interesting result. And in terms of things um, running in my family, like health markers and stuff, I don't really know anything. You know what I mean? So I'll share the ones that I feel comfortable sharing when they come up. Yep, that's what I'm under, under the impression of right now. Half Irish, half Indonesian, or half Irish, half Chinese. We will see which one is which. I am so excited. I submitted this report like way, way back in like December. Um, I guess that's not way back. I was literally last month, but I've been very excited and anxiously awaiting my results. So here we go. Michaela, it's time to learn more about your DNA history. Your ancestry traits and health results based on your DNA are now available. So I'll start with ancestry. Cause obviously, right? That's like what everyone does this for. Yup. <laughs> this is great. This is so funny. I don't know how to like edit for this, but I have to take screenshots of this graph right here. I'm gonna put it in right here. I hope that it worked. I hope you can see it, but <laughs> it's very much half and half. <laughs> your DNA suggests your ancestry is 47.1% British and Irish with ties to four other populations, which is almost 50%. So that would be my dad's half of the family, 47.1% Irish. And that sounds about right. And then 50% East Asian. Wow very exciting oh my gosh i have no idea how to read any of this this is much more complicated than i thought I thought they were going to give me like a paper like an essay to write or read so that i would understand you know what they were telling me but no there's like graphics and everything popping out. oh my gosh i have a whole map everything's popping out at once for me east asian 50 percent beautiful chinese 32.6 percent interesting and within that chinese uh 24 percent southern chinese and taiwanese shanghai mainland china yeah that's this like side that's that's like in the middle of the coast so there are three categories within the chinese 32 percent category and the first one i just said so, so southern chinese and taiwanese um like mainly shanghai the second one is south chinese which is guangdong in the southern provinces that's 7.3 percent that's kind of cool and then 1.3% broadly Chinese, which is just the whole, oh, that's the whole country. <laughs> okay, good to know. And I'm, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I'm 17.4% Indonesian, Thai, Khmer, and Myanmar. I have not, I haven't heard um, Khmer and Myanmar, but yeah, Indonesian. So I have a lot more Indonesian in me than I thought because I thought it was probably going to be like 50% Chinese just because I don't know how many generations back my family had come in from China. You know what I mean? Now I know 17% 17, 17% uh, 17 of my DNA is Indonesian, you know? That's where my mom grew up. So, you know, that, that culture is very near and dear to my heart. I'm happy to have a decent amount of it in me. Time for the second half. European. 50% European. More specifically, 50% Northwestern European, 47.1% British and Irish, mainly Greater Manchester, United Kingdom, and County Cork, Ireland. United Kingdom? What the heck? That's weird. I thought that that side would be nearly the entire 50% would be Irish, but... And then I'm 2.9% French and German. Ah very small. If you go to where I went to like high school, that like southern Maine type of area, there's a wicked many French, like a wicked wicked many French that if they were to test on this website, they would get like 90% French, 97% French, like super duper French people. So that's actually a very tiny, tiny amount for someone who's from Maine. 0% Filipino. 0% <laughs> 
possible things again. I actually love that I can see which ones I'm 0%, 0%, 0 Japanese. I'm gonna go back to see my health reports now. Neanderthal ancestry? There's so much stuff I had no clue that they were gonna check on me. <laughs> what the heck? Maternal haplogroup? I am not educated enough to read this whole thing and understand everything. A uh, typical likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. They're just telling me what I don't have. I want to know what you found. Oh, I have a slightly increased risk of celiac disease. Oh, I have a variant related to age-related macular de- uh, what is it called? Degeneration, which is an eye thing that I know a little bit about because I'm in optometry school. And I have variant detected, but not likely an increased risk. Which is good, obviously. I would never, you know, that's a very devastating disease to have. I have one of the two genetic variants that they tested. I have the variant in the ARMS2 gene. We learned a little bit about that. That's crazy. So I have a variant in the ARMS2 gene. Oh, I want to see if I had a BR BRCA1 and BRCA2. I probably don't. I probably don't, because I know that that's typically Finnish women and Ashkenazi Jewish women, right? Learned about that in school. No variants detected in BRCA1 and BRCA2. Very good. I paid all this extra money for the health um, reports aspect of the 23andMe thing, but I have none of them. I have, I have basically nothing. Okay, let's see if I carry anything. I don't carry any of them. I don't carry any of the carrier status things. That's kind of, it's not sad, obviously. It's obviously not sad. It's okay. However, I did pay quite a bit of extra money to see if I had any interesting health reports and it does not seem as though I do. Oh, 56% chance that I don't have dimples. 44% chance that I do have dimples. I don't have dimples, but it's good to know that I was super close to maybe having them. 92% chance that I do not have a cleft chin. That's actually kind of funny because I low-key do. It was more prominent when I was a kid. 48% chance you've had dandruff. 86% chance you have detached earlobes. It's true. My earlobes are very much detached. My eye color report is really weird. 31% chance of dark brown. 24% chance of dark hazel. 18% 18, 18 chance of light hazel. 14% chance of light brown. 8% chance of green. 3% chance of greenish blue. 2% chance of blue. I didn't say it all correctly. 63% chance you have lots of freckles. I have a few and they come out more in the summertime, like right on my face right here. Not, not a ton. I wouldn't say I'm like one of the people who are like very speckled with freckles. 56% chance your index finger is longer than your ring finger. I wouldn't say that. I think that my ring finger is longer than my index finger. So I guess that I am against the odds there. 63% chance you experience hair photo bleaching. I do think it does get lighter in sunlight. Like when I, in the summertime, when you're in the sun a lot, I definitely think that it does. I only have a 31% chance of straight hair. Wow, I have a wicked many different possibilities. 44 for lightly wavy hair, 17 for wavy hair, 5% for big curls, 3% for small curls, 1% for tight curls. But I have pretty straight hair, but that's just interesting that it's only a 31% chance that I have pretty straight hair. 67% chance of dark brown hair. Yep, yeah, that's a, that's correct. That's accurate. It's it's dyed right now. Obviously you can see it, but you can see it in my roots a lot better that it's, it's dark brown. 55% chance that I had lots of hair at birth. I did have lots of hair at birth. 95% chance you do not have red hair, but 5% chance that you do have it, which is kind of a lot. That's kind of a high chance. My father had red hair when he was a kid, so. That's probably where that 5% comes from. My skin tone is all, all of them are about 20%. It's like 20%, 20%, 20% for all of them, except for dark brown. Dark brown is 1%, so. 57% chance you have a longer big toe than second toe? I have to check. Can you see it? My big toe is longer than my second toe. 72% chance you don't have a widow's peak? I don't. I mean, I have a little weird hair here. But yeah, I would not, I wouldn't call that a widow's peak. I've seen people who have like a proper widow's peak. It says that I can smell asparagus. Um, slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. I love cilantro, so I definitely do not have that variant. More likely to prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream. That's the opposite. I love vanilla ice cream and I do not like chocolate ice cream. I think that it's bitter. Likely prefers salty over sweet. Also incorrect. I have a really bad sweet tooth. I love sweet food. I love, love, love it. 50-50% chance of being able to match a musical pitch. I like to think that I can do this. If you ask my sister, she would probably say no. She would probably say that I cannot do this for the life of me, but I think that I can. Less likely than average to have had a bunion. 
I don't think I have bunions. More likely than average to be afraid of heights. Oh my gosh, yeah, I have a wicked fear of heights. I definitely do. There was a, a time recently where my friends were like, hey, like this rock climbing gym is having a kind of a free event for um, this certain club, we should all do it. And like everyone went, so I went. Everyone else was able to like rock climb the normal things like easily. I could not do it. I was so scared. Even on the like little um, bouldering walls where it's like not even that tall, I could only go up like a certain amount and then I was way too scared to even get any higher. A 50% chance of having a fear of public speaking. I actually really don't have a fear of public speaking. I uh, competed in like my uh, speech contest when I was in high school a lot and I don't know. I don't really have a fear of public speaking that much. More likely than average to have flat feet. My father is flat footed. I don't think that I am though. More likely to have thick hair. I would say that I have thick hair, you know, when I don't bleach all of it. Less likely to hate chewing sounds. I did not know that there was a genetic marker to determine this. I need to look at this a little bit closer. Misophonia? People with a condition called misophonia, everyday noises like the sound of chewing can cause a similar reaction to nails on a chalkboard. Some scientists speculate that it could result from increased connections between the brain systems involved with hearing and the fight or flight response. <laughs> 23andMe researchers in identified one genetic marker associated with feeling rage at the sound of other people chewing. This genetic marker is located near the TNM2 gene, which is involved in brain development, and your genetic variant at this marker is associated with slightly lower odds of having this trait. I will say that I really don't like the sound of people chewing, um, but I can tolerate it a lot better than my sister. My sister cannot tolerate it whatsoever, but for me, I can tolerate it. I just, I, I really don't like it either though. Um, mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten more often than others. I would 1000% say that this is correct. I get bitten up. Oh, 55% report more mosquito bites than others. Oh, come on. 55% of people, that's not more than others. That's about average. That's more than half. Uh, more likely to experience motion sickness. I experience a wicked lot of motion sickness. It's actually really sad because I like to go to amusement parks and I like to go on rides with my friends, but I have to take a lot more breaks than them because I get really, really motion sick on like very simple things. And like even here, like I live in Boston, I have to take the tea wicked often to get to school and that's like a 45 minute ride 45 to an hour depending on the traffic like the time of day that i'm going to school at and i get so motion sick on the tea sometimes like even when i'm sitting forward i cannot sit backwards on the tea anymore period but even when sitting forwards even when sitting sideways i just get so motion sick and i know that like if there's a big visual element of it but even staring out the window so that i can see things moving at the same rate that i'm moving at i still get so motion sick from it, it says i likely don't have a photic sneeze re reflex i just want to know what that is oh it's when if you see bright sunlight you start sneezing I definitely don't have it. It says here, unlikely to have the photic sneeze reflex. 30% of people apparently do have the photic sneeze reflex. That is so weird. Wake up time, likely to wake up at around 9.04 a.m. That's when they think that my internal alarm clock is. That What does that have to do with genetics? That's just when you go to bed and when you wake up. Predisposed to weigh more than average? Oh man, is this why I literally can't lose weight, period? <laughs> I have like struggled honestly with trying to like lose fat on my body for like since high school because when I was in high school I was pretty skinny but I still had like a layer of fat on my body I just had no muscles and then I started working out when I was in college and then I've just been like there was a certain point where I just could not get below my weight like I would try I tried everything I just could not get below my weight and then recently I gained even more weight and I'm just kind of like why why can't I lose weight and it says here that I'm genetically predispositioned to weigh about 5% more than average. Out of my total 718 ge genetics that they looked at for this, 349 of them were associated with higher weight. These habits made the biggest difference in people with your genetics. Oh wow, they're gonna give me dietary advice based on my genes. That's actually really cool. Can you hear the neighbors actually moving every single piece of furniture in their apartment? Are you able to hear that? I hope not. I'm so sorry if you can, if it's distracting. I'm likely tolerant to lacto lactose. I am. I'm not lactose intolerant, so that's correct. So much stuff to read. Good lord. Oh my gosh. I mean, I understand and I'm grateful that they've they've given me so much information, but good lord, I, I can't read all of this right now. Who okay, cares? No, I don't want to do the BMI calculator. I don't believe in the BMI, okay? Sleep movement. Likely more than average sleep movement. That's correct. I move a lot in my sleep. I believe that that's it. So in terms of my health conditions, the most important 
predispositions is that I have a slightly increased uh, increased risk for uh, I have a slightly increased risk for celiac disease and I have a variant associated with age-related macular degeneration. So cool, very exciting. I definitely have a lot more reading to do. I just can't do it all on camera. So like there's a lot for the like that was a that was a brushing, you know, that was a brushing over on top of the surface because there was a ton of stuff in this that I just did not read because I was on camera and I got stressed. <laughs> so, but this was very cool. I'm really excited to know these things now. If I have an increased risk of celiac, I wonder if going gluten-free for a little bit could help me lose weight, you know? I wonder if it could actually help me with um my health a little bit because i don't know you know, yeah, 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 i don't know you know what i'm saying i have no idea because i gotta eat more eggs i love eggs now finding out that i have the um marker that's associated with age related macular degeneration i'm gonna eat more eggs thank you so much for joining i hope you enjoyed this video like and subscribe if you enjoyed this thank you for joining me on kind of the overview of my 23 me results very cool i hope that i can figure out how to like get screenshots in there bye Thank you.